Tucked into Poland's southwestern corner, at the meeting of two rivers, lies the town of Oswiecim. In the early 1900s, a series of barracks was built here to house immigrant workers. A seemingly minor twist in Oswiecim's story that would dramatically change its fate. In 1939, Poland is invaded, triggering World War II. Within days, the German state, the Third Reich, captures Oswiecim and renames it Auschwitz. The Reich rounds up thousands of political prisoners across Poland. Needing a place to hold them, the eye of the German Schutzstaffel, the SS, falls on the barracks at Auschwitz. Inmates face starvation, disease, and deadly violence. With the death toll on the rise, architects from Germany's Topfen Sons are brought in to build a crematorium. The company's logo is stamped with pride on the ovens. The prisoner population swells, and the Reich orders the construction of a subcamp called Birkenau that can hold a hundred thousand inmates. Auschwitz is voracious, swallowing whole villages. Eventually, there will be 48 subcamps, and Auschwitz will cover more land than any other camp in the Reich. Inmates now include Polish political prisoners, gypsies, and Jews, but not every group will find the same fate. Nazi Germany orders a change in policy. Jewish deportees will not be resettled, but exterminated. The so-called final solution to the Jewish question. Birkenau is repurposed as an extermination center. Topf and Sons returns to help build four more gas chambers and crematoria. The company boasts that its facilities can kill and dispose of more than 4,000 human beings in 24 hours. Trains full of Jewish prisoners, sometimes several thousand people a day, begin arriving at Birkenau from nearly every country occupied by Nazi Germany. They have no idea what awaits them, no inkling that their fates and those of the ones they love will be decided in a matter of minutes, that this may well be the last time they set eyes on one another. A young SS officer raised his arm and in one single movement he sent my mom and the baby, my sister and my grandmother, to his right, and then he sent me to his left. That was the very last time I saw them. The process is called selection. An SS doctor casts his eye over new prisoners, deciding whether they're able to work. There is no official standard. His whim prevails, and a flick of his finger decides life or death. It all happens quickly, 
as if on a conveyor belt. It's the night I lose my entire family. Those considered fit for work, usually no more than a quarter of a transport, now begin a meticulous process of dehumanization. The first thing is, we have to take all our clothes off, walking among prisoners and SS soldiers, naked. It was traumatic. Our heads were shaven. We could hardly recognize one another. We are given rags in place of our clothes. We were thrown a dress, no underwear, nothing. Just a dress and some shoes. Then we were tattooed. We were told, forget your name. From now on, you're a number. That's all you are. Inmates endure long, grueling days of labor. Some are forced to stand day and night in tiny cells, while others are chosen as human guinea pigs for brutal medical experiments. It was a feeling of total despair. I said to myself, even if I were to sprout wings, I could not fly out of here. And then there is the cruel anguish of wondering what's happened to loved ones, those taken away during selection. Women, children, the old and infirm, those deemed unfit for work, are taken through camp to a staircase that leads underground. Here they are ordered to undress and told to leave their clothes on numbered hooks to be easily located after what they are told will be a shower. Prisoners are directed into a long, narrow room until they are tightly packed. The door is closed. SS guards drop pellets down wire mesh columns, releasing poisonous gas. Victims die an agonizing death. Their corpses are handled by the Sonderkommando mostly Jewish prisoners forced to face a soul-destroying challenge, to cart out the bodies of fellow inmates and pull out any gold teeth before loading the corpses onto an elevator that carries them up to be burned in waiting ovens. As many as 2,000 people murdered in under 20 minutes. Yet, according to the SS, there are no murderers here. The system is designed to ease the conscience of the killers. Each guard carries out only a single discreet action along the line. In his mind, he personally has not killed anyone. Mamma son tanto felice, pare che ritorno da te. La tua canzone mi dice Singing? Here in the extermination camp, people are still able to sing? How is it possible? Able to sing, able to draw, able to create. In the factory of death, stubborn signs of life. In a world where a person's individuality is systematically erased, here are faces rendered in exquisite detail. Artists at Auschwitz create an intimate view of life at the camp. A record that wouldn't otherwise exist.
The children at Auschwitz show their own kind of resilience. When we returned from work that evening, I found a small flower on my bed. Many happy returns, my friend Renny wished me. And with a wink, she added, did you think we had forgotten your birthday? When it becomes clear that Germany is losing the war, the SS abandons the camp. To hide their crimes, guards blow up Birkenau's crematoria and destroy most records. On January 27, 1945, Soviet troops arrive at the gates of Auschwitz. A soldier picked me up rocking me in his arms, tears flowing down his face. Somebody out there really cares about me. It was the first time I had that feeling. Liberation would take only a matter of hours, but comprehension would be a very different thing. Generations have struggled with what to take away from this place, this story. Auschwitz isn't a moment preserved in amber. It's a scar on a living world, still vulnerable to the sickness of genocide. The past constantly reinvents and reasserts itself. The past is, in fact, present. Auschwitz reminds us of a powerful truth, that while the humanity of any one person can be extinguished, humanity itself cannot be. It endures, sometimes quietly. It triumphs, eventually. <laughs> 